Welcome back, everyone, to Pontus Fathom Press. Uh, this is our Pontus Fathom podcast, episode number 50. I can't believe we're already at number 50. And um, this is the podcast that I actually started during the pandemic lockdown, just as a way to uh, I talk about books and concepts. And here we're still going. So thank you guys for um, for joining. Today we're going to talk about... Um, uh, the anime Ghost in the Shell, and we're going to look at it from the point of view of two of Lacan's books that I've got out on the table here. One of them is his Synthome, and the other one is uh, Lacan's lecture series on transference. So we're going to kind of explore um, the Synthome concept uh transference in terms of uh, Ghost in the Shell, but we'll also kind of look at it from the point of view of anime in general and how how these concepts of synthome and transference apply to anime and viewer, as well as uh, how they apply within the, within the anime. So I think, um, you know, we'll walk through um, some of the concepts behind Lacan's uh, synthome, uh, the way he uses the Borromean knot and talking about the real and the subjective, sorry, the real and the symbolic and the imaginary, and also this notion of um, the idea of uh, how he uses the work, uh, where there's a work, there's no madness, it's kind of like the Foucault quote, but where there's a work, there's no madness, and in, in, in the terms of Joyce's Ulysses, how, how, how anime in general, but Ghost in the Shell especially, kind of has some of these qualities of it, we'll go into that. Um, we'll also look at the transfer, uh, transference lecture, uh, mostly in the idea of psychoanalytic uh, uh, transference, the idea of how the relationship between the analyst and the analyzant uh, has a certain kind of dynamic to it, sometimes using the analyzant's um, uh, need for some kind of, uh, uh, see some scaffolding and taking on the role of that, whether it's a, through a, uh, a, a subjective um, transferring of, say, feelings toward a father or to an authority figure or to a, a loved one. Uh, depending on what comes up in psychoanalysis, this, is, this dynamic is a shifting perspective. And we'll kind of go into that within context of the anime as well. So we're going to really start out with the two works, and then we'll dive into Ghost in the Shell. So maybe a little bit about um, uh, the two books in, you know, in, in transference, really look, looking at that dynamic between um, the projection of the analyzant's unconscious fantasies, unresolved desires, Onto the analyst and the analyst working with that to help explore that with the, with the analyzant and how Ghost in the Shell sort of the character interactions, the dynamics, you know the way Section Nine works, the way the puppet master works, um, even Major's role with puppet master, Batu's role with the Major, kind of shows some of these um, expectations, fears, and desires, and these complex uh, dynamics that shape them and their identities, and we'll also look at the synthome, especially around his. Uh, Borromean knots and his topology. So this is a very strange book of Lacan's. It's kind of a controversial one. It's almost uh, a parody of Lacanian thinking. And, and, and in some ways, maybe it was a self-sabotage on Lacan's part. Um, but the idea here is these knots represent a way of structuring the real symbolic and imaginary orders in the psyche and maintaining stability. And we can also see how in The Ghost in the Shell, the characters... You know, existing as cyborgs between organic and technolo- technological components, uh, sort of are seeing these manifestations of these uh, Borromean knots. So in Lacan's Synthome Lecture, he introduces um, this concept of topology. So sort of a psychoanalytic topology. Sort of a, think of it like a, as a framework, understanding the the structure and the dynamics of the psyche. So, and the topology, you know, think of it as a surface, but also if you wrap that surface like a Mobius strip, it can um, be arranged and interrelated um, 
in the three threefold order of Lacan, Lacan's real symbolic and imaginary. Right, so it's sort of like a, it's it's think of it as the fabric of one's psychic structure, right? When I say psychic, I mean psychological or psychodynamic, right? And so we can kind of go into this psychoanalytic topology um, in, in this way. And I think that the the one that starts out would be would be would be the Baromian knot. And this is sort of um something that's real central to the work. You can see the images here in the book. So this is that mutual dependence of the real symbolic and the imaginary registers. And it's the interrelation of these three rings and the different ways that they can be knotted that represent um, how the topology can be configured and be brought to a stability or an equilibrium and the interplay between the orders in, in different, say, almost in different kind of types, right? So the idea of this is the knots can be unraveled without breaking one of the rings. And this is sort of the way Lacan tries to talk about this um, uh, topology in regards to uh, sort of the, the psychic orders. So I think one of the, um, one of the way that topological knot applies is sort of in, in a language role. So this is sort of a significant component in Ghost in the Shell. Um, think of the way there's a language use in Ghost in the Shell that's both digital and spoken. There's internal language. The, the shell, uh, like the puppet master, is able to sort of override some things, right? And this kind of overriding, this formation of a subjective reality with different registers I think this is kind of like um, uh, sort of shows how there's a, a communication that's happening beneath the surface. So even though there's a spoken communication, sometimes things are happening through um, major talking through the radio to bateau, the puppet master coming through some other machine's voice, the merging of major and the puppet master in the end. So a lot of these are talking about that sort of embedded communication. And um, I think this sort of goes into this concept that Lacan brings in about the something he calls a fourth ring. Like you can add this fourth ring into the Baromian knot. And this sort of, so where the synthome represents the, a structure that goes beyond this triadic arrangement of the, of the registers, there's a sort of a singular point of overlap that holds all the knot together. And all this crossover... Um, is, a, is a way to um, see the synthome kind of understood as a, a subjective formation that emerges in the interrelation of the three orders. And this fourth, or, or, this fourth order, this fourth ring, is sort of prevents disin disintegration or, prevents, or provides stability. And, and also kind of I think it's related to agency and, and at a certain level of autom autonomy. So you see, if you see the synthome as a fourth ring with Ghost in the Shell, you can kind of see that there's a uh, concept here in the idea of being a cyborg, right? You merge the human consciousness with the technological um, system, and that technological augmentation and the biological consciousness blurs somewhat the boundaries between the real symbolic and imaginary, right? Even You see that speech at the end, I kind of go back to that speech in the end, where um, Major and the Puppet Master have become something new, right? It's sort of like this, it gives rise to a unique psychic structure um, that's beyond the original identity. And I think this kind of goes into Lacan's drifting subject idea, right? So the idea is, as, as you have more agency over the motivations in the history of how you are um, understanding your motivations for how your subjectivity changes over time, right? So we think of it like this. The moving subject is the idea that with more agency, you realize it's kind of a different subject that, that's speaking, okay? And I think that this is sort of embodied a bit in the idea of cyborg. You know, it starts out as a, as a person, but then it's an augmented person, but then the augmented person gains some agency, 
especially over Section 9 or over the crime world or over the puppet master. And that's kind of like this fourth ring in the Borromean knot, this subjective formation that uh, holds the com character's complex hybrid selves together. And I think this is kind of like what, what um, Lacan brings in Joyce here to talk about um, how the work is also um, what differentiates madness from just someone who's creating the symptoms. I think he sees sort of Ulysses as a symptome of Joyce, right? And I think in a way you can think of all the animes are your, your mangaka or your anime um, director uh, in, in a way expressing some psychological, deep psychological ideas. I mean, I think at the groundbreaking time of Ghost in the Shell, a lot of these ideas of hybridity and technological augmentation were really new. Right, so you can start to see this psycholo psycholo psychoanalytic topology kind of shines some light on this idea of the hybrid technology integration of Ghost in the Shell. I think the, 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 the DVD sleeve talks about in the future, everyone loves the machines, right? So this character's cyborg nature, the merging of human machine elements, the interplay of the real, the symbolic, and the imaginary. Uh, new identities are formed through this, and that's sort of like that drifting subject, right? And this is sort of along that line of the, um, you know, the way the anime explores subjectivity, but also um, how the characters within the anime sort of react to it. And I think I, I did kind of talk about these boundaries in the hybridity, right? So, so the idea of um, there are some... Um, I almost want to call it like a, a psych psychopathy in the puppet master, let's say. But then he gains the additional agency of Major, who's willing to play like this bodhisattva role, right? So she's willing to bridge the human world and the machine world, and like she'll stop, she's going to stop that uh, erosion that the puppet master kind of represents. And you know, we see this theme has been ripped off, let's say, in The Matrix where you gotta get the, the agents are kind of like the puppet master, right? The agents can be in anyone's body in the matrix. And that, that was directly lifted. I mean, we know that a lot of the um, scenes were kind of lifted from like, like even the famous fight scenes are, are sort of lifted a bit from Ghost in the Shell. But I think even some of those concepts are, are, are moved, moved across from that. So then I think we can um, uh, sort of see some of those typologies in the Ghost in the Shell, just in a, in a normal way, in the sense of spatial and conceptual configurations inside of the world, right? So some of those topologies in the real literal sense are like you have cyberspace is, a, is one of the layers of it, right? So the world's of Ghost in the Shell, cyberspace is, is, is a physical topology, right? Where you can have this idea of um, it's inside of the code, you know, it's sort of like the internet, this is pre-internet or early internet when this came, probably when this anime came out. So the cyberspace element blurs the boundaries between the real and the digital realms. And that raises questions of where is the consciousness? What is the real world? What are humans and what are machines? And sort of, um, you know, and, and kind of goes into some of those topics, even in the, um, for, for example, in Moldenhauer's, um, uh, in our book on Moldenhauer, the psychoanalysis of artificial intelligence kind of goes into this, those tropes of science fiction. Uh, there's also these kind of topology of the networks and connectivity, like the idea of um, Ghost in the Shell kind of explores how these networks are hacked, how machines can be hacked and data stores are hacked and different ghosts are able to... Um, not only hack uh, information and other systems, but they're also having this sort of topology of interconnectedness, the network nature of the electronic grid in which the, uh, the ghosts can hijack it. And then there's also this kind of mystical element almost to the, to the, um, the puppet masters uh, alluding to something even beyond that machine intelligence. So you're sort of getting into, again, this is a trope that comes up in, say, Matrix Revolutions. They've lifted this here. So the idea is you have, or the Mona Lisa Overdrive by William Gibson. You know, this is the ideas here where that um, connectivity in the networking, it reveals some deeper structures. And this probably is, you know, maybe it's an analog for um, Darwinian 
genomic pressures, right? So it's, think of it from Freud. It's like a genomic pressure. So it's like the mach- once the machine is tapped into the the human, right? Then the human has a genomic override. And that's kind of an interesting idea. And it can also also be like a, the Rupert Rupert Sheldrake's morphogenic fields, right? Uh, and if you think of it in a kind of real crazy way, and we've talked about this before, but think of the mycelium of net mushrooms, and then the concept of maybe the human intelligence, our brain being a neural network, like the mycelium's a neural network, and this kind of idea of did um, the mycelium if, influence the evolution of the human network? And then when we as humans create an artificial network, that's also like a mycelium. It's another neural network. An AI network is a neural network. And you start to see that that, that resonance, um, again, the drifting, Lacanian drifting subject here, uh, talked about in terms of the real, let's say, but then the symbolic stack of these different layers sort of shows that interconnectivity and that's something else that maybe Puppet Master was alluding to. Uh, we see some other topologies here, like the cityscapes, like the sprawling metropolis, the towering buildings, you know, um, a lot of that visual um, uh, elements that Ghost in the Shell sort of pioneered of um, cyberpunk kind of look. We get that real cool fusion of technology, city, virtual spaces, liminal spaces. So there's a lot of that kind of um, space that's going on there where, with the... Uh, distinct visuals that films like Blade Runner, uh, uh, you know, sort of pioneered. But then again, there's also another topology, and that's the body with the prosthetics, right? So this idea of Major's body is prosthetic and cybernetic. So it's like, what? Where's the? Where is the machine components, and where are the human components? And so in Ghost of the Shell, like the characters. By having a prosthetic body, they, um, they're changing the notion of embodiment and the boundaries. And then finally, you get sort of that puppet master view where, where the puppet master is seen as the um, uh, ultimate unique topology that's emerged out of this narrative. He's the advanced AI entity. He seeks to merge both with the machines and the human consciousness. He wants to be able to hack all kinds of consciousness. And so that puppet master's topological existence in the digital realm crosses into different topological spaces uh, in that kind of potential convergence of human humans and machines. So you kind of get that real um, distinct topologies in the anime's exploration. But there's also that topology of our, us as the viewer of the anime because we can project into the anime sort of the fantasy of the, of the robot world, the fantasy of this kind of genre. So you also see that at work. And I think this is why, you know, I I think it's very interesting to kind of bring that up. And I think this is also going into the transference topic. So maybe we'll uh, talk a little bit uh, about transference um, from a Lacanian psychoanalytic perspective. Uh, And, you know, Lacan did do electron transference, but I'll I'll kind of keep it a little bit more general than that because it's very special in some of it. But maybe we can go into some of the details of it, but... Really, transference is the idea in psychoanalysis of the unconscious, let's say, redirection of feelings or desires or fantasies or projections onto another person. Normally in psychoanalysis, it's the analyst. So the patient will project these, redirect these feelings onto the analyst during the therapeutic sessions, let's say. And it's also the, the idea that the therapist can then take on that role in a way, to allow that transference to happen. And as the patient projects that unresolved emotional experience onto the analyst, um, and it's often based on early experiences or um, early relationships, something like this, the, the, um, uh, the analyst can access, let's say, uh, and have some insight into um, the patient and also can give back to the patient some agency as as the trained analyst looks at that let's call it the topology while they're in transference 
the analyst can sort of see, oh, you're reacting this way. There's a complex here. There's something here. And the analyst can sort of work with that. And I think there's a, there is something strange about this in Ghost in the Shell because we see that there's, um, um, you know, there's sort of this idea of that transference dynamic in the characters and maybe even in the, in the idea of the anime viewer as well. So, you know, so transference on the Kanian theory um, is, is a, you know, I would, I would think it's a, maybe uh, Lacan would see it as a crucial component of the therapeutic process. Um, and then it's the patient has the ability to reenact in a way these unresolved issues within the therapeutic relationship. And, and it's also a direct access to that exact um, thread, let's call it, right? That ghost, well, you can even call it a ghost, right? So in Ghost in the Shell, this transfer dynamic is all over the place. And we, we kind of see it where, you know, Major is working for Section 9, and there's team members interacting with, uh, with, with each other. Um, they're interacting on different levels. If you take, for example, like Major, um, Bateau and Major has, have a kind of a relationship. A lot of times transference, and this is why um, in Lacan's Transference series, he talks a lot about Plato's Symposium and the idea of Alcibiades and Socrates and this idea of love in transference. Because you kind of see love is also has those, some of the elements of this. They're more natural. They're not a therapeutic kind of uh, uh, situation. But with Ghost in the Shell, the interesting detail is, let's give an example of Bateau, right? So Bateau, he's not, he's not um, well, he is somewhat connected to Major, but he also has this, um, he's always uh, protective of her and he's supportive of her. And you can kind of see a transference there. There's sort of this echo dynamic of, um, of that transferential relationship there. So you think of the team's loyalty to Major, and they're following her in her insights and uh, in her hunches, right? But you can also see this reflection on uh, transference as an unconscious desire, too. So transference and Ghost in the Shell, you can also look at the character's quest for connectivity or self, right? The, the characters are all struggling with a sense of how do they fit into this world, and especially as cyborg or, or technologically enhanced humans, there's sort of constantly a, a, a grappling with the merging of the human consciousness with the technological augmentation, right? And this idea, there's a sense of fragmentation here. Uh, there's a sense of a lack of cohesiveness in some cases. And that co-relationship between the different characters and their interrelation is often, often serves as a kind of vehicle for expressing and working through these desires, the desires for connection, the desires for validation, like who am I in this world? Um, so you can kind of see that Ghost in the Shell's characters, although because they're fragmented of human and cyborg, they're sort of have a, a um, maybe they're looking for a wholeness. Um, and, but at the same time, if you kind of take this into the concept of um, uh, the counter transference, Right, so countertransference is an interesting con concept that he discusses too. So um, the concept of counter countertransference is when the analyst, they, uh, I think Lacan calls it the desire of the analyst. So you can think of it two ways. You, you have a patient seeing a, a, a therapist, right? And the patient is transferring to the analyst. But the analyst may also have a transference back to the patient. And I think this is kind of where the puppet master and the major relation kind of come out, right? So the idea of the, what, what would the desire of the analyst be? Like, say this patient is very interesting or this case is very interesting. And now that the, the, the analyst has to be on guard of this trans, counter transference because as that role becomes, as the ghost of the analyzant, let's say, goes into the shell of the analyst, um, now the analyst is going to have emotional reactions and biases and unconscious responses based on his own being human, right? To the analysis sort of um, uh, projections, let's call it, or, or transference. So that counter-transference kind of exists in this Lacanian topology in, inside of Ghost in the Shell. So there's a, we can draw parallels to the idea of a counter-transference between, not only between the team members, let's say, in Section 9, but also between the idea of, um, I would say, something like the, the um, puppet master. And, and if you think of us as anime viewers, or just like the way Lacan is often used in, in film studies, there's kind of a transference that goes on with, 
the viewer. So we're, we as viewers of the anime are going to project our attachments and instincts into the anime. And then we'll see it sort of fulfilling sort of a fantasy space, right? And that can be, in a healthy way, some of that is just, um, it's play. It can be seen as play. It can just be entertainment. In an unhealthy way, it becomes you identify, you know, o- overly with it. You think of like otaku, uh, where, the, you know, wars fought over the anime, what it means, and waifus and things like this. You know, it gets kind of kind of strange. It becomes a world of its own. And again, this goes into that drifting subject concept where the topology and the transfer into the, the cathexis, let's say, cathecting of the, of the anime fan for the anime. I mean, there's, a, there's a, that whole a- aspect of it too. So, you know, think of, Countertransference extending to the audience engagement with the narrative, right? As viewers, you're developing this emotional response to the characters and the interactions, your own experiences, your biases, fan culture starts to really, the subject really starts to drift. And this kind of comes out, uh, we talk about it in the um, volume one of uh, Impedance and Admittance in Desiring Machines, uh, Moldenhauer's book. I'll show those at the end if you guys want to go check out our uh, Patreon or in our uh, bookstore links, you could go check those out. Uh, so in a way that this is the, you know, this kind of, this is at play, right? So so if we kind of go back to, let's go back to, like, think of counter-transference maybe in relation to Major or in, in the Puppet Master, right? See, if you see Bateau, he's a close partner of Major, and he kind of uh, has a personal attachment to her. He's protective of her. He has a sp- sense of responsibility for her. And... Yeah, it kind of manifests as an unwavering support, right? And I think this is what, in, like, the clinical reaction, I think, to countertransference is, is to observe that, hey, as an analyst, I am also, just to be vigilant, let's say, to be present, and to try to have that neutral tone, right, that neutral position. Really, it's impossible, but especially under those emotional situations, like, say, when Major's facing, like, a life-threatening combat or something like that, you see Bateau really reacts to... To her, it like has an emotional investment in her. But if you think about the puppet master, uh, this is a bit different, right? So when Major and the puppet master have this kind of synthome identity mix, right? So there's kind of like this merging of Major and the puppet master, right? And we think of this as, uh, we can think of this in terms of not only in transference, but in terms of uh, uh, synthome and counter transference. So you think of it as, um, with Major and the Puppet Master, there's a merging of the consciousness, and that's kind of a transformation of identity. And, and also, a, it's like re, it's a restructuring of the notion of self, right? So the synthome, here, this Boramian knot, this is probably like the fourth ring, right? The synthome in this context is sort of like the... Um, that a structure emerges that integrates and holds together the human, the machine, and now this puppet master machine in this subjective blur, right? So this Gaussian blur sort of happens where they compact. You know, I think Major says they're different. They're the same but different or something like that at the end. And if you think of it in terms of transference and countertransference, just the idea of the puppet master, um, you think of psychological projection as kind of one way you can look at the puppet master, like it's a, it's a projection. But if you look at it in terms of transference and countertransference, you can see the, um, the transference occurs when there's an unconscious desire or fantasy that's projected onto another person. And then countertransference is like the emotional reaction to the counterpart, like the foil of that projection. So it's like, you know, if you become more fatherly when there's a fatherly projection or you become enamored when there's an amorous projection, right? And I think that that emotional reaction, um, Major's military nature, uh, though I also see, characterizes that merging of the puppet master where she's almost grounding the puppet master's, I want to say, um, uh, it's kind of like the paprika dream sequence, right? The paprika dream sequence needs needs some kind of agent, some kind of fourth ring to um, give agency to the um, to the strange uh, Bar- Baromian knot that comes out of the merger, right? And if you think of um, you can think of it also in terms of boundaries and hybrid hybrid theory. 
you know, hybrid moments, let's call it. So you see that overlapping, that hybrid hybridity of major and puppet master. It's really challenging the nature of what human psyche is. And I think this is sort of going to be the topic of the third book of Moldenhauer's uh, uh, computational complexity and psychiatric agency. So you sort of see this human machine, cyborg, this hybridity. Um, it also aligns with the fragmented subject and the blurring of the boundaries between the um, symbolic order, the real symbolic and the um, imaginary. And Major's transformation now has this additional layer. It's not just physical body, which is robot and human. It's not just the technological augmentation. It's not just the consciousness of having merged uh, with machine, but now there's another ghost, another identity that's on top of this, right? And it's almost like a, a it's almost like a psychosis, right? In a, in a weird way, but in the way that it's managed, again back to synthome, it's managed like Ulysses Majors making a work out of this. We are something else now, right? So you sort of see that uh, uh, by the end of Go Ghost in the Shell, the synthome transference, counter transference, pivots. And it provides that framework. It almost is the Baromian knot of the, of the, of the story, where there's a transforma transformative nature of the, what was fractured of the human technological cyborg now gets an additional ring, an additional identity. And then the, the fusing of that together um, kind of brings that psychiatric agency. And that'll be that third book of... of um, that book's coming out... Um, uh, probably by the end of this year, uh, Moldenhauer's book. So anyway, I thought that was kind of thought-provoking. I, I wonder, hope that this was interesting to you guys. Um, just a little bit of uh, Ghost in the Shell, Baromian Knot. Uh, if you guys could leave some comments below, what do you think about uh, Lacan's Synthome? It's, a, it's quite a um, controversial one. Um, we, we can do more of these. I'd like to do one just on the transference. There's a lot of interesting things in there. Like uh, I am a child in the in the that there's a, a a diagram there that's very interesting. You can think of the puppet master in this sense, but yeah, leave your comments below. Uh, if you're interested, go and check out our um, our bookstore and our Patreon. It can help to support the channel. I know this is uh, our fiftieth podcast, so I really uh, appreciate everyone who's been along for the ride. Uh, I'm going to keep doing these. I think we've got one more coming out um, next week. We're going to do Zizek on, um, on science fiction. So I uh, appreciate you guys checking that one out. And um, yeah, go check out our, our Moldenhauer series from Paltos Fathom Press. Helps us support the channel. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.